Welcome to the Heart Centered Entrepreneur Podcast. I want you to be rich. Yes, I want abundant financial success for your business. But I don't just care about your business making money. I care about you too. I want you to be rich in happiness, in the impact you make, in your relationships, and in how you give back. I'm Anna. I built my six-figure business as a side hustle while I was pregnant with my daughter in 2016. Now I've helped dozens of women do the same. I'm here to help you build a profitable, heart-centered, fully booked business with the latest tips on sales and visibility, with proven mindset hacks, and sneak peeks behind the scenes with what's working right now in the online space and in my business. Ready to make more money with heart? Let's go. Hi, sweet friends. Coming to you from rainy San Diego. We do not get very much rain. It's actually considered a desert by rainfall. So when it does rain, it just feels honestly magical, magical. I had some of my best girlfriends visiting me this weekend at my house, and it was such a blessing to be able to snuggle in, drink hot cocoa, and just go out a little bit. But I am just feeling so much cozy vibes, so much grounded vibes. And so I am sending those your way if you need a hug or some love or some just reminders that you are safe, you are enough, everything is working out fine, you're in the right place, take a breath. And I'm just sending you some of our healing, grounding rain energy right now, right now. I love you so much. Um, I'm so excited for today's episode. This is going to be kind of a lot of episodes. I'll like do like really big outlines. This is more of a rant. So I think it's going to be a good one. I was going to title this podcast episode, How Bad Do You Want It? But I don't think it's that at all. I think it's more, um, how sold are you on your success? How worthy do you feel of your dreams and desires? How safe does it feel to be happy and at peace? Because um, let me tell you a story and then we'll dive in. So I've had a few fun wins this week, which has been really nice. My kids and I got approved for global entry slash century so we can get around international airports faster, which, you know, one of my big goals this year that I'm excited for and also terrified for is traveling international with my kids. You guys know I'm a single mama, so in some ways it intimidates me, but I'm also feeling like they're seven and nine. They're the perfect ages. They're just such good kids. And I'm so excited to experience the world with them, even if it means navigating a new world. I've gone international before, some before I had kids, but I'm kind of a newbie to this. So if you are a massive international traveler, please send me all the tips, but we got approved for that this week, which was a really big blessing. And then the other thing is I found out I got my first permanent yoga sculpt class to teach. Um, I think I shared that last year I did my certification at a gym I've been going to for three years and was just a really safe haven for me during my divorce. And just it's this gym is so much more than a gym to me. It's really my family and the kids love the kids center. Sometimes they help out the girls at the front desk and just make themselves at home there. And it's just such a place of refuge for me. And so getting certified to teach. And then, um, I did my basically community service where I taught six classes for free. And then since then I've been subbing and then I get to do a class. So I'm super excited about that, but it made me think about, um, just how we get anything we want in life, whether you're really working on getting your first few coaching clients or hitting your first six figure year, or maybe you've done that and you're working on your next, you know, your multi six figure years, your million dollar year, whatever it is for you. I think I've really hacked how to get something quickly, manifest my desires quickly. And I want to talk about that in the context of how I manifested teaching this, um, yoga sculpt class and getting a permanent spot at it. Um, and I also want to apply it to how I created that 200 K cash for the house that I bought and also apply it to the, the mindset behind me starting my business and really fully booking it so quickly. And I think it's all the same thing, but with different things. So buckle your seatbelt, but first I want you to get clear on what desire you're most want to, wanting to bring to life right now. What is it? That's the dream or goal or desire that you're trying to make happen. If you guys have ever been a client of mine, you know I'm a big fan of having one big life desire and one big business desire at a time. I think we either have so many goals that we cannot meet them because we're trying to do 900 things at once, or we just really only have one goal. And I think I found this really beautiful spot of having one big business or work ambition and one big life ambition. And I really think you can work on both at the same time and they're kind of complimentary. So before I start talking about this framework on manifesting your desires and dreams faster, I want you to say out loud, what is the desire you're going to apply this to? 
Okay. What is that dream that you're most wanting? Is it to sign your next five paying clients? Is it to launch your group program and sell that out? Is it to make 10K in cash this month? Really try to get specific for me. Um, is it to what, whatever it is, whatever is that dream or desire, maybe it's to find like a right hand woman in your business, a great OBM. Maybe it's to find a nanny. Um, what is that desire? That way you can be having that in mind as we're talking about this. So tell you my story, right? So I decided really probably two years ago that I wanted to, um, I was really enjoying fitness and I really wanted to teach and give back in a way that I think there's something about being in a group fitness class of women that is really affirming and not just obviously good for our physical bodies, but for our mental health. I found that doing group fitness classes really helped my mental health and was really almost mindset work for me or meditation where I could for an hour completely numb out and not think about anything but getting through the workout class, right? And as a busy woman, as a busy mama, as a busy business owner, our brain is always on. And yes, I believe in meditation, blah, blah, blah. But like for me, I'm kind of like an active meditator. Even in my meditation corner right now, I have candles and I have little cards and I have like little like uh, sprays for my face and essential, like things I can do. I'm just a busy body, okay? So for me, I really feel like in the last three years, diving into workouts has been such a great way to almost daily meditate, to release my thoughts, to have a blank mind, right? I'm a big fan also, you guys know of my daily check-in and journaling and thinking and reflecting, but I think there's also a time to not, to not think of anything or do anything. And that's different than numbing out, right? Of course, there's a time and a place for Netflix, nothing wrong with that. But I think there's something about really emptying your mind that is such a gift. So I kind of decided two years ago, I think I want to do this, but I'm not sure when the right time is. Um, I did another little bar certification, but I never really followed through on it. And then the opportunity came up to do the six week certification. And I did that. I paid money for it, obviously. And then I, um, after that, right away, did my six free classes for the community. And um, then when they offered me a sub spot, I was like, yes, I'll do it. Even though like the times were at like really weird times and it was inconvenient. But for me, I knew that the end goal was I wanted to have a permanent class and I was willing to do what it what I needed to do to get there. And I think when I hear people starting their coaching businesses and they're telling me like, I want to, you know, I've never signed a coaching client, but I want to make 10K this month. I want to launch a group program, blah, blah, blah. Like I think the online space has done us a disservice and that there's so much marketing around like sneeze and make a 10K month. And some of that's good in that it, it it's making it the belief possible that it is possible because it is. But I think it's forgetting to tell us, but on the way, you're still going to have to do work. On the way, you're still going to have to, when you're starting out, charge usually lower as you start or do free work or really get your feet wet in that, right? And I think because I came from the therapy world where I had to do 3,000 hours of free or low cost therapy, you know, like I was just like, oh, this is how it goes. Like you do the free work to get to the paid work, right? You you get the experience, you, you put in the reps. Like I remember interning for a TV station where I did a ton of work and got zero dollars. And I'm not saying that, you know, we need to do that forever because, you know, I'm a big fan of also believing you're worthy of money and making an F ton of money. But I think these are related. And like, I really, for me, my willingness to do anything and everything to meet my goal is what gets me my goals faster. And so that's why I kind of wanted to label this podcast episode, like, how bad do you want it? Like, sometimes, like, I see women in the online space and I'm like, do you, how bad do you really want this, right? Because for me, for my coaching business, when I wanted it, I, you know, got up at 5 a.m. to to see clients because I had a day job at 8, right? I saw clients on the weekend. I did free community workshops. I charged $40 for things, right? Like I just was wanting to do and be in the work and try. And I think though, because I knew eventually I'm going to make a fuck ton of money doing this, right? When you're not rooted in your eventual success, it's really hard for you to sacrifice on the way to get there. And then, then you're never successful, right? 
And I just think this is a really interesting dynamic because then comes a point where you have to be like, oh, actually now I did put in the reps and now it's time to turn up the volume on my prices. Now it's time to have more boundaries. Now I can be picky. Now it's time to scale. Now it's time to believe I am worthy of making a ton of money for a little bit of hours, right? So really ask yourself that. What phase are you in? Are you in the phase of you need to just be willing to like buckle down and do the work, even if there isn't a lot of immediate gratification and immediate reward? Or are you at the point where you actually have done the work and now you need to enjoy all the work you did and enjoy the time off and enjoy being able to charge more money, right? I think both are equally important, but we really have to sink into both mindsets. I really see business as like in a day job, you kind of like day one, make the paycheck, but you kind of make that same paycheck till you die. In entrepreneurship, day one, you're not making any money, right? It's kind of an upfront investment as you are getting experience and building your audience and creating your programs, right? But then once you have those assets built, then you're able to make infinite money and infinitely increase your income. And so I just think it's like really remembering this entrepreneurship mindset of like, it is infinite returns, but you have to start somewhere and you have to be willing to do the work initially and just go all in in that way. And again, like one of my favorite affirmations at the start of my business was my success is inevitable. I knew that I was going to have a six figure coaching practice. I didn't know I was going to have a multi six figure coaching practice, to be honest, right? I just wanted to make $76,000 a year. Like that was my goal, (laughs) but I knew it was possible for me. I remember telling my first coach, like, I really don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I know I'm going to figure it out. And that's what we need to have the belief in. Not that we have that perfect path, but that we're innovative, we're resilient, and that over time, we're going to crush it. We're going to figure it out. We're going to have little failures, but we're going to do it. And I think same thing with my house. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to afford, you know, an $800,000 house in San Diego, but I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to save 200K to make that happen. I don't know where the 200K is going to come from because I don't have that right now, but I know I'm going to figure it out. And that's why I was willing to put $20 in the bank. And a lot of people aren't willing to put $20 in the bank towards their $200 cash goal because they're like, oh, it's never going to happen. And if you believe it's never going to happen, you're never going to take the small steps that actually make it happen. Do you see how this is like a chicken in the egg, right? So what I'm saying is, it's so interesting, but I find that the women that are most convinced of their big goal happening, of their eventual success being a no-brainer, the more willing they are to sacrifice right now to make it happen. They're like, I'll do anything because I know this is going to happen, right? Like, think about me, right? I was like, I know I'm going to save the 200K. And so, of course, I'm going to save my pennies. Of course, I'm going to, you know, scrimp and scrounge and do whatever I need to. Now, that being said, I'm not saying sacrifice at all costs, right? Like I said, for when I started my coaching business, I was willing to wake up at 5 a.m. to do coaching calls, but I wasn't really willing to work at night, right? Or do coaching calls at nights because that's when I was with my babies. I talk about this in my book, Freedom Fund, but I think it's really about finding the sacrifice sacrifices that feel like a sacrifice, right? Are you willing to sacrifice to meet your goals? We sacrifice for everyone else in our life. I find that I talk to women all the time when I talk to them about sacrificing for their goals. They are sacrificing left, right, and center for their kids, for their partner, for their friends, but they're not sacrificing for themselves, right? (laughs) And so getting clear on like what you are willing to sacrifice on and what you're not, right? Like I said, when I was working on my 200K cash goal, I was willing to live in a one-bedroom apartment with my babies, right? But what I wasn't willing to do is cancel my $200 a month gym membership, right? Because for me, that was like, "Mm, no, that's my mental health lifeline. So I think it's such a personal conversation around like, how do you sacrifice without it feeling like a sacrifice, without you being miserable, right? How can it feel exciting to say like, you know, I I know this is going to get me to my goal faster. So that makes me really pumped about this. Okay. So anyway, go back to the yoga sculpt thing, right? I really feel like I have shown myself that when I have a goal in mind, the more that I'm willing to come, not compromise, but sacrifice the faster I get there, right? Like for me, the class that they gave me, um, for sculpt is 5 a.m. on Mondays. 
I do not work out at, at 5 a.m. normally, but I'm like, you know what? Can I make it work for the next 90 days? Yeah, I can, right? And that's what I asked the gym owner, like, hey, can I commit to like 90 days, right? And I think that's the other thing is we think when we're making these little sacrifices, we think like, oh, this is going to be forever because I'm not going to meet my goal. If you're locked in on, you know, you're going to meet your goal. You're happy to make the short-term sacrifices because you know they're short-term, right? I was like, shoot, I'm happy to live in a one-bedroom apartment because I know it's just going to be for a year, right? And then it almost gets exciting and it almost almost gets glamorous. Like it sounds wild, but then my mind really went to like, you know, what's nice about a one bedroom is it's going to be really easy to keep this clean. You know, what's nice about a one bedroom is I don't have a washer or dryer. So I'm going to pay someone to do my laundry for me. Like then your brain is going to go to work on how to make the best of that situation. Um, like for me, I'm like, mm, do I really want to get my kids out the door and go to the gym at 5am? Not really, but I'm like, you know what? That's going to be great motivation to get me to bed early. That's going to be a great motivation for us to get more organized on the way to school, right? And so I think it's just remembering you were making these like sacrifices when we want something badly for 90 days at a time. And then you can assess, do I want to keep doing it or not? But I, again, like, I see this theme, like for me getting a teaching position at the gym really quickly, for me saving the 200K for my dream house, for me fully booking my coaching practice. Let's talk about that one a little more. I really feel like I had that belief, right? I believed I was worthy of my my dream to have a fully booked coaching practice. I felt, you know, worthy of that. Of course, like along the way, I did have some blocks around like when I started receiving money, I had to do a lot of mindset work around feeling okay receiving money for talking to women on Zoom <laughs> and making like way more than I was doing that in person as a therapist. And again, like really believing like it's safe to to do something that comes this natural to me and make money and enjoy it. I think our world has really conditioned us to believe that work equals misery, right? Like work has to feel hard and uncomfortable and but no, like work really can be that thing that you enjoy, whether it's, you know, I find that most of my clients go into one or two buckets. Either they are doing some type of coaching or they're doing some type of service providing, right? And for my women that are coaches, like those are women that love to talk to people, love to listen to people, love to help people solve their problems, right? And they've probably been doing a version of that for a long time and never getting paid for it or never getting paid well for it. So it's kind of a mind F to be paid well for something you've always done or never been compensated really well for. And then suddenly someone's paying you a thousand dollars for something that you've always done for free, right? Same thing with service providing, right? Those women that are website designers or accountants or virtual assistants, right? Really getting compensated well for something that historically has not been compensated well, right? So of course there is that mindset work there. All that to say, I just noticed my theme that along the way to manifesting every single desire I've ever had quickly, that there's been a theme of wanting it badly, believing that it's mine. Like, duh. Like, even if I have moments of doubt, at the end of the day, I know I'm going to have this thing. I know it's going to make my life better. I know I may be a different person on the other side, but I, I can figure this out. And being willing to make short-term sacrifices to make that happen. So maybe, maybe a great action step from this episode is getting out a pen and paper and jotting down what sacrifices are you willing to make for the next 90 days to make your desire happen faster. And this is just a rough draft. You don't have to do these ideas, but maybe just create a buffet of what's possible for you. Like maybe if you're working on signing your next five coaching clients, some of the options of sacrificial actions would include um, getting visible online, even if that feels like torture, right? <laughs> like posting more on social media, or maybe it would be hosting like a free community workshop in your local community. That really worked for me well when I was starting off life coaching. Um, or maybe it would be reaching out to people and really connecting and offering a free coaching call with them or a free package of five VA hours if you're really working on launching that business, right? What are some brave things you can do? List them out. Maybe come up with 10 ideas and then pick one, right? Maybe it means waking up at 
5 a.m. or 6 a.m. so you can have two hours before you go to your day job to actually have dedicated work time. I really like putting, like now that I have my full-time business, I like putting the actions in my day first of the things for my business, recording my podcast, dreaming and visioning for my business because I know I'm always gonna get back to my clients. And then once I open up my client chat, once I open up my email, like we're down that rabbit hole, right? Same thing with your day job. Once you open up your day job stuff, like that's just going to blah, 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 be in your mind. And so I really encourage you to put your work, your visioning, whatever it is first in the day, then you're not miserable worrying about it all day, right? I find especially like when women are starting their coaching businesses, you know, even when they say they're working a lot in their business, I find they're not doing a lot of work. They're doing a lot of worrying or a lot of researching or a lot of second guessing, overthinking. And really like, I feel like you can do what you need to do in like one or two hours a day. So like get it done, network in Facebook groups, do your coaching call, create your content in 10 minutes, like just get it done and then have the rest of the day for your day, right? Whether right now it's for your day job or your kids or whatever, but eventually that's going to be free time. But even when you're a multi six figure business owner, that's why I'm a big fan of hobbies (laughs) because we want to fill our time with other things so that we don't overwork, right? Okay. Hopefully this was useful for you. And hopefully I think a lot of not, not of people talk about this along with their success. Like, yes, I have a lot of success, but also I'm willing to do like whatever it takes to get there. Right. So what are you willing to do so that you can get to your goals faster in a way that feels aligned for you in a way that feels abundant for you in a way that feels non-restrictive for you. And again, It might be an action like waking up at 5 a.m. to work on your business, but it also might be more of like a courageous thing, (laughs) like being able to be visible or reach out or actually sell and post on social media like, hey, I have actual spots open if someone wants to work with me as their coach, right? Maybe it's like posting on your personal Facebook page that you have coaching spots open. Like think less about things that are going to take a lot of time and more things that are courageous and brave and dropping your ego. Because at the end of the day, we're going to all die. <laughs> like, And so while we're alive, while we're here, like let's make the best of this life. And The people that love you, like me, like your closest friends, we're going to be here for you no matter what. And so, so often we shape our behavior around people that whose opinions don't even matter to us, right? So forget what the internet thinks, forget what your judgmental friends think, and just remember what what do you think about yourself? What do I think about you, right? It's okay for you to make mistakes. It's okay for you to get messy. It's okay for you to look silly, right? Drop your ego at the door and accomplish your dreams and desires. This is the year to make it happen. This is your year and it's going to come through courage. It's going to come through some sacrifices, but really it's going to be fun along the way, right? You can either be miserable avoiding your goal or you can be miserable making your goal happen. (laughs) Okay. I love you very much and sending you lots of love today. Okay, one more thing I almost forgot to tell you. If you resonate with my work, you're going to love my absolutely free workshop. Sign your next five coaching clients with one simple strategy, the strategy that I use to fully book my coaching practice twice for my maternity leave in about 90 days. And I teach you this exact strategy in this 20-minute webinar. You guys know I do things differently around here. So this 20-minute presentation has a workbook and it will really help you understand the strategy that I used. And once you finish it, I give you $3 coffee money. Yes, I will PayPal you because I want you to go to a coffee shop and actually take action on what you learn in these 20 minutes. So I'll put the link below, but it is heartcenteredentrepreneur.com slash free workshop. If you want to get the strategy to sign your next five paying coaching clients, you're going to love it. And I cannot wait to hang out with you over there. Thanks for hanging out today. Please hit that subscribe button so you can make sure to stay updated anytime a new episode drops. And I would love for you to join me in my free Facebook community. It's called The Heart Centered Entrepreneur. We discuss the podcast episodes. I regularly go live and do free trainings. And you may even meet your newest biz bestie. So you can join at heartcenteredcommunity.com. It's absolutely free. And I cannot wait to see you in there.